Anyway, here is Paul Spooner. He's a former colleague of mine from when I worked at Electric Attack. He used to, uh, he's a mechanical engineer and uh, he also does other sorts of things. And he's currently doing some sort of startup, which I don't know a whole lot about, dealing with um, AI generated music. And so I will let you take it away. Thank you very much. So, I'd like to move this speaker over so I can see everybody while I'm sitting down. Sure. Um, or, 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 or I guess I don't want to break the, anything. Want to move the table? Uh, just, oh, I can move. Yeah, I can move the table. The table's on wheels. Why don't yeah. we just Why don't we just move this over a little bit? Is that Is that Is that better? It's just so that I'm not standing yeah. at the front of someone's and speaker right? instead of the back so, of someone's head. Well, if you want to want to tell us yeah, a little very bit about you. before before uh, before you. Stuff yeah, yeah. Well, so this is kind of a, an interactive uh, presentation. I'm assuming that you guys are mostly interested in audio quality reproduction. Is that kind of the, the focus of this group? So this presentation is not about audio quality reproduction, although there is some interesting stuff happening in the AI space with that. Um, who, who's familiar with like general AI technologies? Is anybody... About half, the, yeah, yeah, two thirds, sure, yeah, yeah yes. I was gonna say, not so much the quality. I would be interested in knowing what type of rights does AI generated music has compared to you know, like art intellectual art. property restrictions and things. And, yeah. You know, how can they, you know, it seems that they could potentially overwhelm. You know, yeah, yeah. Well, so yeah, we'll so we'll talk about some of that. Um, so this is this talk is mostly about. Uh, what is AI generated music uh, and what is the space doing and how is it different from synthesis and stuff like that. So you guys are all familiar with synthesizers, right? Yeah, so so the early synthesizers, they're in the 50s and 70s. Uh, do you guys want to listen to some RCA Mark II synthesizer sounds? Anybody interested in that? <laughs> So kind of a toy, really, more than more than an instrument. Now, was this was this AI generator, or was this just playing a? I'm I'm just playing a YouTube video of of the RCA. So a lot of this stuff is YouTube videos where I just I've got stuff, and you can all, if anybody is interested in anything here, ai.triap.com. You go there, and there's a whole presentation. I've got all my notes and stuff. So if I I forget something, or you miss something, or you want to go back and listen to something, it's all right there. You can go and browse it to your heart's content. Uh, you can also just ask ChatGPT about AI music generation, which is uh, part of what I did to prepare for this presentation. So uh, so I didn't quite finish. So, so most of you guys are interested in, in music reproduction. Who here is a musician who actually performs, creates music, produces it, something like that? One, two, it's a, a small handful. Uh, but you've got some interest in in AI rights and things like that. Who, who's interested in in live music production? Maybe you don't make it yourself, but you're interested in in creating music. Sure. So uh, maybe about half the group. Uh, who's just here for the beer and, and, and talking to people? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, there you go. There's the honest people. Now I know who I'm talking to. Uh, so there's this. Go ahead. No, I said for all these reasons. Yes. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. You can raise your hand for everything. So uh, MIDI came in about the 1980s. So there was this um, synthesizer thing, but nobody could really do anything with it because you had to like set up the synthesizer for a specific sound and you push the button and then you'd have to set, reset it up for a different sound. You want to be able to do that easily. So MIDI was kind of introduced it, and there were a lot of different standards, but MIDI kind of won out as the, the standard for digital music creation. And MIDI basically just tells the computer, okay, whatever system you're using for generating sounds, just do it with this note for this duration more or less. It doesn't even do that. It tells it start now and then later it'll tell it stop now, right? So it's, it's not even a duration thing, but anyway. Uh, so there's MIDI and then there's uh, something called algorithmic composition. So this was something where uh, you were basically using a, an algorithm or, or you know some sort of program to compose MIDI. So you weren't really composing directly to, to waveform, although there's a little experimentation there, but you're composing primarily to MIDI. So you'd have a computer program during the MIDI, then you can plug the MIDI into a synthesizer or a um, sample library or something like that. So there's a piece of software called Cohen Pro, and uh, this is obviously just a, a MIDI synth, more or less, as we would think about it today. But it's one of the first you could call AI music generation. Oh, 
going to listen to uh, all of the piece. Yes, thank you. I, I don't want to listen to all the piece either. So the uh, so that's kind of mechanical sounding, but it's it's something. It's it's much better than uh, than the you know, synthesizer just making beeps and boops and stuff. So then early two thousands, we had some machine learning stuff where people were 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 experimenting mostly again with MIDI synthesization, where you'd have the AI do a little bit of MIDI composition and then plug it into a synth. Uh, about the mid 2010s, we had a lot of stuff where they were doing direct uh, AI waveform synthesis. So, so this is instead of synth synthesizing um, uh, a set of samples and then using the samples with a MIDI library to, to create the waveform, you're actually synthesizing the waveform directly for whatever your purposes are. So there's a little bit example, um, Magenta by Google. We've got, uh, here's just a kind of a, where is this? This is a jam session that somebody was doing. So this is a live musician pressing some keys, and then the AI was playing along with him, more or less. So it's the human, and this is the AI. And then here's the human again. So again, not really very revolutionary stuff, but it's doing MIDI composition. Yeah, again, uh, not really doing direct waveform synthesis. Uh, finally, we get to flow machines. This was in, let's see, when was this? 20... Seven years ago, so... Just raise your hand if you want me to stop, and I'll stop. What's going on there? So that was, uh, it was composed by AI in the style of the Beatles. Uh, I believe it was produced with a sound library. I don't think that it produced the whole waveform. We will get to direct waveform production shortly. But I, you know, I don't know. I don't know if they did a voice AI or if they just crushed down a, a human recording. Um, I think that, though. That was, that was written by MIDI, right? That was still. That was still, that was still, that was still well, yeah. So this is back in 20, uh, 2016, I believe, and I think that was also a MIDI composition. Um, but it was one of the first uh, well-produced songs that was composed by by AI. So with MIDI, you got you got the computer driving the uh, synthesizer or other instruments through the MIDI. Correct. Yeah. And that's in contrast to what you were saying that rather than pulling from a sample library? Yeah, well, so you can use a sample I, I, library. I sure, yeah. So, so a sample library synthesizer is um, you've got a whole library of, of samples. Yeah, yeah, you've got a, a, you know, a note played quickly, a note played slowly, a note played with a vibrato or whatever, and then different notes played at different pitches. Wow. And then you can have your MIDI synthesizer pick which one you want to use and plug it into the song and, and create the waveform by picking out this library. Um, there are a lot of direct synthesizer based MIDI systems where you just have a you know, MIDI waveform generator. I think I can explain this a little bit. Go ahead, Jim. Basically, um, you, have, you, have, you have your old style back in the 70s, you have your old style analog synthesizer, mm -hmm. your all-new sound the analog synthesizer, you know, versus in the 80s, they came along and they started making uh, digital synths, and a little bit later in the 80s, they made sampling synths. So they would actually take a sample of an instrument, and that would sample it, and then from there, you could put it on, play a horn or whatever on your keyboard based on that sample that was put in there. So what's going on here is he's talking about a computer driving a MIDI interface to that synthesizer, and that synthesizer then is playing basically automatically instead of having a human on a keyboard, the computer, yeah, the computer is controlling the keyboard effectively. Yeah. Okay, so that's what he's talking about. So in the in the nineties, Frank Zappa before he died was <laughs> composing on what probably call a synclaver, I think it was called. Mm -hmm. And because his music that he was composing was too difficult for humans to play. And 
he used that all the way to the last two years of his life before he died exactly in 95, I think. Um, but he used that exclusively, I guess, for his for class where he did both compositions that he was doing at the time. Yeah. We've got one from uh, not quite that far back, but it looks like 2012. So this is someone playing on a piano, or it's a synth piano, but it's a sampled, a sampled piano. We can do things to it that we were previously able to do with synthesizers, might chorus it a little bit. Change the envelope of it. This is again all on the synth piano. And then you can make it into a honky tonk piano. Okay, well, uh, so this is the synth claver now. This is a string of seven strings across the keyboard. Uh, now we can mix samples together, sample patches. These so, you get the idea. So yeah, so he's using a synclaver there. I think he's, he's using a very basic, just a sample replacement thing. But yeah, you can do composition uh, input. So the so the idea is that you want to be able to have the highest bandwidth possible of the human input into the system, so that you can get the most of what you're trying to do into the music. And so a keyboard has got a lot of input, right? It's got all these keys, and you can press them harder or softer. And we'll do a little bit more later about that. Um, so in most of us, the files are already digitized that they're drawing on, or is mm. someone can actually sit there with an actual keyboard, analog microphone, and then that gets coded, and then can, be, can they do it real time with an acoustic instrument? You can. There are there are encoding MIDI encoding uh, keyboards that you can get. So like a, or or pianos rather. So it's got an encoder underneath every key. So when you press a key, it sends a MIDI signal to the MIDI encoder, and then you can sync that up with your with your uh, instrument. Usually, when they're recording a sample library, they'll just have a guy sitting there and pressing one note at a time, and then wait for the reverb to fade off, and then you know you got that all right, good, and then go to the next note, right? And you know it takes a long time. It's not really a performance. It's just a recording. Um, you can, though, like you were saying, get a, a, a piano with an encoder in it so that you can get a MIDI recording of what you're playing. And then you could also record the audio of that, and then you could use those samples if you wanted to and remix it or whatever. You'd be able to have the score produced dynamically. So it is possible. Um, most of this is just synths, though. It's not actually on a, a real keyboard. Uh, so let's see. GANs. Uh, so who knows what a GAN is? We've got a GAN. Anybody? Okay, so so a GAN is a kind of um, AI learning technique. It's it's basically um, what biology does. You've got um, you've got men who come up with lots of ideas, and then women who say, "No, that's dumb. I don't like it." And and then the men finally come up with an idea the woman likes, and then it's like, "Great!" And then the woman comes up with a problem, and she's like, "I've got this problem." And then the man's like, "No, that's not a problem. That's dumb." And so she finally comes up with a problem that the man's like, oh, that is a problem. And then he goes and fixes it and just cycles after each other. So a GAN is a system that creates uh, ideas, creates some sort of thing, and then another system that shoots it down unless it matches some other thing well enough. So in a GAN, Training Against Music, you have a library of music. You've got your, your judging GAN, your target GAN, and it says, okay, is the thing that, produce, that this um, model's producing the, uh, better than the thing that I, I've got stored over here, right? Is it is it better than the, the actual real life thing? And uh, it just keeps shooting it down until this thing gets good enough. And then when this gets good enough to fool this, then this one gets trained up until it's good enough to tell the difference between the good thing and the bad thing. And so it just, it cycles after itself like that and runs away and you get a model. Yes, sir. Is there an initial objective? Uh, well, so the objective is uh, to match some target in this case, it would be a piece of music. So you have a, a training library of 20,000 hours of music. Uh, well, so the training period depends on the size of the network and all that stuff. But yeah, it goes it goes back and forth much more than 40,000 times. This is, a, this, is, this is something that happens 
probably long before you have been trying to use this in real life. Like, this is when you're, when they're actually training. Teams. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, so we can. We, I mean, we can go into a little bit of. Um, a well, well, sometimes <laughs> there's there's retraining that happens on some layers. Uh, so you've got a base architecture, and then you can retrain layers of it for a specific application. Um, I think uh, I I think some of these apps actually do that in real time, which is one of the problems with with doing it. I mean, it's not actually in real time. We got there. How much time do we got? We're almost halfway through. How did that happen? All right. So uh, let's see. Let's get to the the real fun stuff. We've got MuseNet. Who's used MuseNet? Nobody's used it. Good. This will be fun. So this is uh, this is MuseNet. It's by OpenAI, and uh, so, so it's explain what 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 it is before before you before I play some sounds. All right. So yes, sir. So this is a um, a fully AI waveform synthesis system. It's got a bunch of math that it does, and you give it a prompt. You get you type in, for example, this is uh, some jazz piano and bass drums, and then it will produce a section of music based on that prompt. So here we go. So is this? Is this fully synthesized from the computer? This is fully synthesized from scratch. So, so this isn't so This isn't MIDI? Yeah, right all the way from AI all the way. All the way, yeah. So that, I mean, you know, we'll probably actually get more interest listening to that than some of the other stuff we've played so far. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I'm kind of working up to where we're at today. Um, here's some, some uh, based on the first five notes of Chopin's Opus 10, number 9. So if you're familiar with that piece, you'll... Yeah, that's just improvising. Yeah. on for two minutes anyway uh, so that's completely synthesized from from start to finish end to end uh, generating the waveforms generating the composition generating all that stuff all inside the system uh, let's see they, yes sir they have training rules like you know only generate music if possible played by a human being no but most of it is trained <laughs> on music yeah, yeah most most of it is trained on music that was Humans, so made for humans, yeah, yeah. and humans like to listen to things that are possible for humans to play. So it tends to generate music that's that's playable by humans. Uh, but it, yeah, you could easily train it on uh, a whole symphony or whatever, right? And then you need a symphony to play it. So. I was just thinking like a solo pianist who has seventeen fingers or something would be something an AI might come up with. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That's something that's yeah. You know, we care about music. One of the reasons why we're here. And all of a sudden, you you see that there's you know computing power that can produce all the freaking permutations of jazz, classical, rock, and uh, you know country and whatever, and you know cover every single space. You know, and, and what's the, what's what room is there for the actual you know you know people are writing and create? I don't know. I mean, kinda, uh, yeah, I mean it's it's well AI is invading every intellectual space. Yeah. Right? I mean, maybe some, maybe we don't care if it's good enough and we care that it comes from a computer or that uh, somebody wrote it. <laughs> it's hard to miss. So there, there's some good news. Uh, that model cannot do voice at all. Like it's just all it does is instruments. Yes, sir. Does that take into consideration emotions? Like can you program like you wanted to make someone sad or something happy? Before? You know, like music we'll do some live stuff at the end here, and we'll we'll try it. We'll see if it if it can hit that target, because uh, there's live stuff now that you can generate in a couple seconds, and it'll. Uh... Make cry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's reading the tax code, I think, is what it's going to do. Yeah. Is that what you wish for us today? <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> so so that was um, Usenet. Two years later, they came out with Jukebox. Jukebox does do voices, so here's some. 
completely synthesized. This is pop in the style of Katy Perry. So again, end to end. <laughs> yeah, a little noisy. Uh, let's see if we can get another one. I don't know. <laughs> Do you want Frank Sinatra? Do you want some Joe Bonsama? No, Sinatra. Sinatra. Classic pop in the style of Frank Sinatra. <laughs> It's Christmas time, you know what that means. Oh, the touch of time, as I light the tree, this year will be a time. Oh, light it up, <laughs> so, so it was making up the lyrics and everything? Yes, yeah. <laughs> Could be, yeah, in a few years maybe. Obviously, yeah, obviously at that level, isn't, you're not going to be fooled, but yeah, at some level it, it might be possible. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. So what's next? All right. So uh, now I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the uh, MIDI replacement. So there's some there's some problems with MIDI, uh, as anyone who produces music knows. Uh, so the group at Muse Score, which is a um, composition is like an orchestral scoring program. Uh, they have a, a system to hear what the orchestra will sound like when they're performing your song. So you can, you know, play with it. And uh, so they wrote their own system for creating stuff replaces MIDI. And so here's some examples of, of that system running. So this is a, um, I'm not sure which one goes first, but I think this is a recording. And here's the synthesized version. That's described the thing of hardware creating that? Uh, so that is based on a sample library, but it's not using MIDI. It's using a different system that allows it to uh, do, you know, growths and decays and a little bit more movement in the in sound. It was markedly better. Yeah, better than me. Yeah, than MIDI at least. Um, so anyway, I, I'm kind of moving all this over very quickly, but as I said, you can go to the, the page and there's links to all of these videos. You can look into them yourselves if you want. There's some really interesting stuff about MuseScore and, and how they're doing their um, their sound sampling collation and, and processing and stuff. Uh, let's see. Let's get a little bit more. Here's the orchestra again. And this is the synthesizer. Back to the recording. Anyway, you do that all day. Uh, so that's some synthesizer stuff where it, it's not, it's a sampler, but uh, there are also a very good synthesizers now that are doing uh, real, real time synthesis of, of you know, guitar or piano or whatever, uh, using noise and, and uh, filters and things like that. You can look into that if you'd like. 
in the London Symphony, this is a whole big thing on sampling. There, there was a huge thing that they've made available for engineers now for sample, to sample for. It might be the same thing. I don't know. I don't know if it's the same or different. But yeah, MuseScore did a very large uh, project to sample a bunch more stuff because the, all the sample libraries are using MIDI more or less, and they needed a they needed to be coded differently so that they could pull them out uh, in, a, in an intelligent way for the software to use. So MuseScore is also talking about integrating AI composition so that you can say, well, I want a, a gloss here, and it'll just compose it into the right directly into the score. Uh, Things like that, or you know, I, I want a, a whole song that's in the style of this other composer, right? And so you just it pulls the composer in and generates something. But again, that would be composition that wouldn't be direct waveform synthesis. Although you can see where they kind of overlap. Uh, so there is a synth called the Osmos Two. Does anyone know about the Osmos? It's a it's basically a keyboard, but it's got. Um, so aftertouch, you guys know about aftertouch. So when you're playing on a piano, uh, how hard you hit the key and how quickly you hit the key both affect the sound. So you can you can touch it very slowly and it'll make a soft sound. You can touch it very slowly, but give it a oomph right at the end to kick the hammer onto the, the string after the, the dampers come off. And that gives it a different sound. So there's all these different variations you can do and how exactly you touch the key. Uh, the synthesizers then, uh, after a while, added a feature where well they've got this little sensor in there so they can do aftertouch where you can press the key and then push on a little harder it makes it louder and let off a little bit it makes it softer and so you can vary kind of like a violin right you can play it louder or softer while you're still on the same note uh, so the osmos which is uh, a favorite for um, musical performers now is uh, same thing it's got aftertouch but it then also has each key has a lateral motion so you can bend the pitch of each note while you're playing yeah, exactly. Or, you know, individual ones or whatever. Uh, it's got, you can sample different instruments based on if you um, strike or press. So you can play a xylophone and a bass drum at the same time or whatever, right? It's just you know, anything you want. Uh, so it's a, a very cool input device. Uh, there's another thing called, um, what was that? There's also the Roly Seaborn, I think it's called. Yeah. That's similar to what you just mentioned, Osmo. Okay. There's a few metal bands. How do you spell it? R O L I. Uh, I think it's called the Seaboard. Rolly Seaboard, S E A B O A R D. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. It has this kind of like, um, um, the of like keyboards, like a computer keyboard. So mm -hmm. the cheaper ones have like a membrane instead of using mechanical keys. So yeah. It's the same kind of technique that they have like a membrane that makes okay. sense. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And it does pitch bending and stuff uh, yeah. on each key and stuff. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, there you go. I'll put a link to that seaboard in the document. Uh, so there's another um, AI. It's not AI music generation, but it's an AI interface where they had a, a dancer hooked up to a bunch of sensors, and then they used an AI, which is it was a very basic AI, but it was a, a transform to take the motion of the dancer and transform it into a musical composition. So they were doing a dance, and the composition was generated based on the dance. I don't know, it seems kind of gimmicky to me, but that, that's another thing that's happening in AI space. They're, they're experimenting with input methods. Uh, let's see, that's the Osmos. Put the Seaboard on there. It's an electronic version of kind of like a combo player and a big version dancer or something like that for their... They're just like one line together. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, I think that was the idea. I don't have um, I don't have a sample of that. It, it, they didn't have a lot of good stuff, but so it's not like the AI is following the dance. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, accompaniment, right? AI accompaniment, kind of. Uh, there was still a lot of, of sampling. I. Th I forget how they did the synthesis on that one, but it, obviously you could plug it into whatever synthesizer you wanted. So uh, here is, bringing us up to today, live, there's an app called Riffusion, R-I-F-F-U-S-I-O-N.com. Uh, you can go on there and uh, generate, I think there are 12 second samples, but I don't know, what do you want to hear? Make my wish come true, uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. woke up this morning in the misty embrace, November's autumn. Um, here's a classical kind of one. I don't know what this... Thank you. 
You knew no coochie girl Pink Holly Holly twisted so still a little mushy, still a little, you know, synthy, but uh, these are generated based on a prompt. So, I mean, we can do it right now. Does anyone want to generate a song? <laughs> <laughs> well, just, give us an idea of how, what, what kind of inputs required. Uh, so, catchy energy, anime chaos. The one we just listened to was Whisper of La Lost Love. Make make me cry. What's your name? <laughs> Who should I make cry? Make Stan cry. Stan, make Stan cry. <laughs> so it's processing it, it's doing some AI stuff. Um, <laughs> It didn't like making Stan cry. I think uh, I think it's got some empathy already. I think Prince wrote a song about that. What it sounds like when Stan cries. Um, yes, sir. We have, we have no idea what kind of inputs required. Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, so you, you need to give us at least an example of some input that generates something. So we. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, th th those were the. That, we're just lost. Here we go. Melancholy melodies. So yeah. we've got two examples. Here, let's see how this works. <laughs> I'll call that more of a club tune myself, but whatever. Sure, sure. Melancholy bluegrass. <laughs> All right. Melancholy bluegrass. Let's see what it comes up with. Heartbreaks lament. In three, two, one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, that's right. Humanity lives another year. Alright. I will say it's fair to say this is probably the most laughter and mirth this group has had in several years. Good. This is great. Uh, oh no. Oh. <laughs> I guess AI is still not work. Yeah, yeah. There's a long way to go. There's always a long way to go. Uh, was I, who, who watches two minute papers? Anyone watch two minute papers on YouTube? Yeah, so, yeah. The another law of papers thing, is. Uh, another good thing to try out is, I mean, uh, you can use uh, LLMs to generate prompts for. Yes. Or for this purpose. Yes, if you're too lazy to even write a prompt, yeah. you, you can have the computer write a prompt. You can basically tell them, here's the documentation for the, for the library that generates the music. That yeah. You want this kind of music to help you generate a prompt for it. It can, yeah, yeah, it can. Yeah. Um, That's a simple word. Because a lot, a lot of those, they actually, uh, there's a very particular way for giving them a compo these models are kind of like uh, brain, they're black box. You're, you're not really sure you know how it works or what's better or worse. Right. So it's kind of a matter of trial and error. And, but definitely a, a long way to go. <laughs> Absolutely. So I've got another one running in the background here, but we're Q9 of 9, so it might uh, might take too long. So that the one that we were just listening to is Refusion, Refusion, Refusion. Yeah. Um, again, 
ai.triad.com goes to this document, and the document's got all the links in it, so if you forget something, you just go there and you can, you can look it up. Uh, so we were just listening to Riff Fusion. I've got um, Music Gen running in the background. Let's see if we can get AI Test Kitchen to make us something. Make us some melancholy bluegrass. We're not going to give up on it yet. <laughs> While we're waiting for that to generate, there's also... come back with a picture of a melon... <laughs> and a collie on some blue grass. Exactly. Now that's uh, that's mid journey, I think. <laughs> so uh, while we're waiting for that to generate, this is something. This is a live. So this is live AI music generation in concert with a, a human performer. Um, I don't like the results, but maybe you will. That was eight months ago. So I think that was like one of 64 tracks on Trent Reznor's next album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so very, very synthy. Uh, I, I didn't like it, but you know, it, it, there, it's in that space. I don't know. I don't know. So he seemed to get out. Yeah. So that was generated. Just uh, push the button and generate that based on the prompt melancholy bluegrass. So that's all I put in there. It came out with, you know, not great, but uh, yeah, it, it played something. It was it was at least melancholy and bluegrass sounding. Sixty percent of the way there is great. Yeah. Like program in, make something beautiful. A beautiful melancholy bluegrass. Oh, well, just beautiful. Computers. Yeah, yeah. You know, just like, because uh, humans produce stuff, they go, I think those other, I think that audience is going to like this. Yeah. And I, if the computer could learn to do something, like, humans will like this. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It, currently, it just trains against, uh, against data. There's not live training happening. I added beautiful. It's about the same. So yeah, a lot of the a lot of the modern AI methods are, use a GAN in their training. Uh, it's not an architecture; it's a training method. So yeah, a lot of them do use that. Uh, there are other, um, uh, what was it, uh, diffusion, diffusion models are another, uh, another big one where they basically take a, a set of training data and they add noise to it. And they just keep adding noise to it and then asking the AI to train all the way back to the original. And eventually they can just give it noise to begin with and it'll train back to something that sounds like the original. Do so, you have uh, some a, examples of music that's actually been released for consumption that's been done with AI? Well, so that uh, I don't, because as you were saying, uh, it's very difficult to tell if AI was used in the process. So a lot of people will, yeah, you can you can use this thing, yeah, yeah, you can you can generate a clip and then you go, oh, that sounds nice, and then you perform it yourself, or you could sample the clip and put it into a DAW and you know play with it or whatever. Um, so. 100% produced by AI and released for radio publication or something? I don't think so because it's uncopyrightable. You can't copyright AI-generated music. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can't make money off it because you can't license it. And so nobody's going to produce professionally a piece of music for you know based on AI because they can't produce money off of it. And there's no example that you're aware of? None that I'm aware of, no. I, I, because, again, it doesn't seem like it would be a good idea to do. But, yeah. I can look at. Oh, 
Mm-hmm. If somebody doing their skateboarding video and they want to sound that and you cannot do just any music because you need to the shot to the other video, can you use that type of like AI music and not infringe? Do you know that you if you're generating it through AI, do you know that you're not infringing? Uh, okay, so the topic of, of IP is a broad one. Um, I'm just going to say for myself, I think the entire concept is uh, foolish and, and wrongheaded. Uh, but if you care about the idea of IP, I believe um, I believe the, the courts have preliminarily ruled, of course they can make a different ruling, that AI generated music, even if it's trained based off of copyrighted sources, is not copyrightable, and so it's not infringing on on their copyright. But there are also groups that will um, train their AIs specifically on open source data, so that you're not infringing on any copyrighted music. Uh, and then, of course, there are, there are groups that will release the source code, so that the code itself is in the public domain, and then you can't be infringing because the software you're using to create it is in the public domain. Yes, sir. Yeah, one, one interesting thing that happened, and you probably recall this, um, uh, Elon Thank Musk's you. partner Grimes uh, actually said, she basically said anybody who wants to make AI-generated music based off of samples of my music mm. is welcome to. And if you make any money off of it, I only want 50% of the proceeds. <laughs> so she basically said, like, you can, you can literally make, a, I am hoping somebody will make a better me. Yeah, yeah. And will make more money than I make on my own music by mm-hmm. using AI sampling and reading all that stuff. And right. she said, literally, it was bold serious. She like put it, all, put it all out there and said, like, you know, anybody who wants to do that, you can have half the revenue. Mm-hmm. Which mm-hmm. I thought was pretty. I mean, that's very that's very forward thinking. Right, right. Which is I mean, antithetical to most of the music industry thinks. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's it's um, it. It appears generous on the surface, although I think if someone were to make an AI model based on her music, uh, they wouldn't have to give her anything because it's because they're generating it themselves. But because, but also they wouldn't be able to make very much mu- money off of it because they can't copyright it either. So, uh, I think so you could. Really recent development. She said yeah. this before any of that legislation came out. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, so but, like, what I'm hearing is that it's possible to you know maybe train. You know, your AI to mimic the Beatles and make Beatles identical, you know, yes. to a degree and distinguishable music and, you know, not infringing on, on a copyright and, and make money off it at that point. Uh, well, if you if you can make money off it without, without copywriting it, right? If you can make money without copywriting it, then you can make money on it. Uh, but so what, so, so what stops somebody from generating their AI music, claiming it's their own, and then making money on it? So I they could do that, and that would be so that would be copyright fraud, I believe. So yes, sir. And so what, you're starting a startup. What is the purpose of your startup? What's, what's the business plan? What are you selling to? Uh, so I would like to make a little box that's got a powered input on one side and a microphone input on one side and an output on the other side. And it'll listen to what's happening on the microphone and it'll generate live music based on whatever's happening. So you could have it sitting in your kitchen doing the dishes and it'll pre- create a soundtrack for you while you're doing the dishes. Or you could have it at a live performance and it would do a backing track or an accompaniment or whatever's missing in the sound, right? It's producing whatever's missing in the sound and filling in for whatever it is. So if you want to play on the piano and you want to have a, a jazz band behind you, it'll do that or whatever it is. So that's the idea. Uh, obviously, the technology is not there yet, but now's the time to start thinking in that, that direction, kind of try to figure out what would be needed, or what kind of features we want, and uh, and how interested people would be in that. And so if you chain together like 24 of these and make your own orchestra. Yeah, well, I mean, you could just tell it to make an orchestra, but yeah. But, but have it improvise off of the other one. It might be interesting to see if they can emerge behavior. Yes, yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. Or feed it back into itself. Right. And that's how the longer generation systems work, is they have a, they can only generate about 10 to 20 seconds at a time. Yeah. And so they'll just take 20 seconds, they'll cut off the last 10 seconds, feed it back into the generator, generate another 20 seconds, and then cut off the end and feed it back in. And so it, it has some cohesion. Otherwise, it, it kind of loses track of itself, like you were talking about with the AI, yeah, with AI conversation. You'll be talking about it, something, and then it'll lose the thread of the conversation and go on wandering off on some other topic, and you have to go, no, 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 come back. So this is the same kind of idea where at the beginning of every prompt, you're like, we're talking about you know this thing, don't forget. Right. 
So you start with melancholy bluegrass, and five minutes later, all of a sudden, you're like like trance or something. Yeah, you always end up in a trance dance party somehow, I think, <laughs> when you're an AI. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it, it feeds back the, um, a lot of times it'll feed both the prompt and the last 20 seconds or whatever it back into the model so that it's got the context so that it maintains cohesion with the, with the rest of the composition. But yeah, you could easily do something where you have a little dial and you, you tune between different genres or whatever. There's some really cool charts on the, um, the AI uh, music generation. I think, um, where was that? You can call that dial the prima donna dial. And so it's really <laughs> cool. it ignores everything. It ignores else. everything else. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, the artiste dial. Have, have some of the models that you've mentioned today, are they um, what's operative in the type of uh, boxes that are used by like a, a solo performer who wants accompaniment for himself and he'll like play a note and he'll hit a button and then it'll copy that and mm. bring it back to a certain rhythm and then 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 it hit another one and it'll put those two together and they come pretty soon he's got a band playing behind him and he's yeah, yeah. his guitar and rip his guitar in and out of it and sing and whatever. Yeah. Is that, is that so that's a that's a looping tool or a loop box or something like that. And and uh, to my knowledge they don't use any AI because you don't need it. It's just sampling it's basically just an automatic sampler where you push the button, it starts recording and you let go and it just plays it back in loop. And they've got a little bit of processing in there so that it loops nicely. And so that it lines up with a click track. Usually you'll have a click track playing in your ear so that you're synced up with all the other tracks and stuff. But um, I don't think they're using any, any AI for that. But there's no reason they couldn't. So The, the main thing is, as you notice, right, let's see if we got music gen. Oh, we finally got some music gen going. You might have said this already, and I might have missed it, but what, what, um, like, what makes AI AI and separate from the other kind of logic? It's like, I mean, it's amazing to me that there can be a flash drive that has even one song on it, let alone a hundred, you know, ten thousand songs, yeah. and and that it can pick thing, pick it up in sequence and play it back in sequence, and that's all timed perfectly and everything. So that seems like a kind of intelligence to me. But mm. what what sets AI? Apart from what's the difference between AI and just a synth or something or a playback method or something like that? Yeah, a digital playback method that is sure. all synced in time and keeps track of all that and doesn't come back all dark, dark and Yeah, and yeah. And so the the basic like ground level distinction is that uh, nobody knows how the AI systems actually work. Mm -hmm. That's really the difference. If you've got a synth, somebody somewhere connected that synth up and they figured out how to get the waveform and they added some noise and they added a, a warbleizer and they you know, crushed it down or whatever and they did something to it and and if you looked at the system you could figure out oh this is what they did in order to get this sound with an ai system it trains itself more or less and so uh if you open up the system it's just one giant piece of linear algebra and uh no one knows how it works uh, Big Brother's made of it, so but it doesn't understand. I mean, you don't understand yourself very well, so I don't think AI understands itself very well. Yes, sir. I have a, 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 another like a library of uh, AI generated stuff mm. that's online uh, that's uh, using like uh, top of the line OpenAI models. Um, it's called jukebox.openai.com. There's like seven thousand different. Oh. OpenAI.com slash research slash jukebox, maybe. Uh, so if you go to jukebox.openai.com, it will just take you straight to the to the library where you can start playing. Um, and um, I haven't heard it. There we go. Yet, but yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be. Sample Explorer. Very good. You want to listen to some samples here? Uh, artist, genre, collection. What genre do we want here? Uh, we've got acoustic, alternate, Christian, uh, art punk, Celtic, children's music, country, country blues, country hip hop, country jazz, country metal. Celtic, why not? There we go. <laughs> There's only one of these. I can tell why. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> it does. It does kind of sound like a cartoon, doesn't it? Yeah. If you could actually get um, it sounding like real instruments, that would be. Yeah, that'd be nice. Nice. Yeah. Well, so so that's the thing. If you want something that sounds like a real instrument, you can use something like sampling library or um, MuseScore or something like that to generate orchestral sounds or something like that. Um, if you want something that's just composing, you know, using AI Composer and then do a sample library to get the sound out. You could do, and you could do that for for decades now. Um, this is complete synthesis, and so it's it's not going to sound specifically like a specific instrument because it's trained on a bunch of different instruments, and so it's kind of blending them together. Um, it could eventually, though, right? It could, yes, yeah. absolutely, absolutely, could. Is is there a like a digital equivalent of like a mellotron, like 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 Paul McCartney used to use, where it like it had little samples of this much <laughs> magnetic tape that would gravity dra gravity driven fall through cr cross heads and then mm. load and you could play it on the keyboard and come up with these little samples is there, is there any, i mean i mean yeah. there's no reason to but it was it, it's called a cool, it's called a daw cool, a digital kind of uh tones in a lot of their compositions yeah it's called a digital audio workstation or daw d-a-w and uh it's basically that it's a there's a piece of software that you can use to create music of whatever genre you want Using samples or synthesizers or whatever, you know, all together at the same time. Lyrics, uh, music, background, whatever. And uh, yeah, digital audio workstation, there's uh, quite a few of them you can choose from. For example, hmm. do we know if this, this thing is learning as it's performing the piece that you, that, that you asked it for? It is not. At that point, it's just okay. This is what I came up with, and here it goes. It's baked in, yeah, yeah. Once it's once it's created the sound, it I, I don't think it retrains on it, because um, otherwise you get the same thing with the, the runaway feedback. It feedbacks to itself, and then you end up in a weird land, even weirder than what we've already listened to. <laughs> okay. One one of the funny things is not not related to music, but related to just general conversational AI is in the early days of it, Microsoft put out a number of chat bots to test, to field test AI. To see oh, what yeah. Happened. If you could actually train an AI off of input from users, right? And so they had already trained it with some private stuff in the lab, and then they turned it on in the public and let the, let the public talk to it. And what they found is basically without really these very many um, variances, within about seven to 14 days, every AI they ever released that was allowed to learn from the public became a misogynistic, racist, homophobic, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Nazi, yeah. yeah. The job or so Within a second, people. because people would just slam it with the most vile crap just to see what would happen. And it just started thinking to stuff people talk. And, just, and so they all just went off the rails. So mm. they quickly realized that if you're going to have an ethical AI, you have to have a strong ethics training corpus to Face it on, mm -hmm. and then on top of that, real. you have to lock it down and yeah. not allow it to learn from public input. Otherwise, mm. it will veer off course. Mm. You know, mm. so yeah, it's a really fascinating thing. I'm guessing the music systems are the same way for the same reasons. You don't want it kind of teaching itself to wander into futility. You know? Yeah, yeah, turning its own data. You can put uh, samples and stuff. Like Music Gen uh, has a thing where you can uh, talk into the microphone or take a sample, a sound sample or whatever, and put it in there, and it'll build a song based on that sample, yeah. but it's not training the model based on the sample. It's just using it as input for the model when right. it runs it that one time. Yeah. And uh, same thing with, with um, all the, yeah, GPT and all those guys, they don't do live training based on user input for exactly the reasons you outlined it. Uh, is gameable, as, yeah. as they say. So uh, it looks like we're a little over time. I'm at the end of my presentation. We got plenty of time. We got plenty of time, all right. The meeting officially goes for free. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I've come to the end of my notes, but we can go back to any of these that we'd like to. We can talk about uh, the specific AI models, the specific types of training. Uh, we can talk about IP a little more if you want. What's your favorite uh, that you've come up with so far? Uh, and, and also, are there, are there interesting prompts that you've developed that you think come up with something interesting? For, for music and stuff? Music. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've not actually been very impressed with any of the models. It's, um, I've played with them, and as a musician myself, I'm like, oh, I can do better than that, right? Like, it, I, it's, not, it's not super cool. 
to me, like uh, I do a little bit of, of graphic arts and stuff, but I'm not a very good visual artist. Like I'm just, I'm mediocre. Um, so to me, the AI visual generation stuff is really cool because I don't have expertise there. Right. And it, yeah, yeah, it allows me to be like, whoa, this is amazing. I can, I can generate this stuff without having the expertise. But as a musician and singer and performer and stuff, uh, going into the, uh, the AI music generation space, I have expertise there. And so it's like, well, this isn't very good. You know, it's, it's not very impressive. Does it become a helpful assistant? Like rather than saying, like, you know, you can do, even as a base it's like, hey, I'd like a click track at this BPM. It probably generate that pretty reliably. Yeah, although you don't need it to, but yeah. You don't need it to, but, but you can also say something like, hey, I'd like you to give me a bass motif in the spirit of you know this bass player, yes. this genre, uh, with yes. this BPM, and then it could then lay down a bass track that you could then play on top of whatever, right? Yes, you absolutely can, yeah. And it's it's for for what it does... Usually the best thing they can do is, like you were saying, produce a sample for you to use in a composition or, or something like that. Or produce a composition. You can have it, I, like I said, there have been composition, AI composition tools around for decades now that will generate a melody or generate, you know, MIDI melody or whatever you want. And so doing something like that where you've got this riff, you can generate a preview of it, feed it into the AI, get it to create a, you know, a few variations on it, sample those, put them back in your DAW, play with them, you know, things like that. So it is a tool, end-to-end, uh, -end, it's, uh, as you say, nowhere near ready for you know, actual release to the public, but uh, it's developing very quickly. And so something to be thinking about, and like you're saying, something to be thinking about as far as music production and uh, the kind of artists you're subsidizing, the kind of people that you want to be uh, making the music that you listen to. Because uh, very soon, I, I don't know exactly how soon, but very soon all the big music streamers are, uh, you know, services, so... Apple Music, uh, YouTube Music, Spotify, all the, you know, everybody is going to have an AI music generator running in the background, and it's going to be listening to all the music you're listening to, and uh, silently and without telling you, you're going to put on autoplay, and it's going to start generating music for you that it came up with itself, that they don't have to pay royalties for. So, <laughs> that's that's going to happen, uh, and... Maybe they'll they'll have a button that you can turn it off with. Maybe they won't. Uh, but it's something to be aware of. It, like you were saying, you know, if you're if you care about that kind of thing, it's uh, it's something that um, is going to happen. And then there won't be any incentive for any new musicians to create new music because the AI can do it all. I think in a way, some of the legislation they're talking about, or at least maybe they tried to pass recently, mm -hmm. um, was supposed to sort of address that in a way, that wasn't it? Like to basically say, hey, you're not allowed to train off of copyrighted material, and I think. Even you know Facebook and whatnot were basically saying, "Hey, if we if we adhere to the law as you've expressed it explicitly, all of our plans go down the drain because we'd have to pay billions in copyright royalties to all of these things that we used to train our AI for." Yeah. Right. So yeah. I, I don't know that they'll be able to listen to the um, the law is struck. You know, they can't really even listen to the music without having to pay royalties to do so, right? And to train off. Of it. What if they offer double the royalties? an artist that's going to let them change their right. model on. And that's the right. thing. You guys can figure that out. So. But it's, an, it's, yeah. it's a weird, weird space we're in right now. And like usual, the law is trying to do things seemingly kind of like with, you know, both eyes blinded and one hand tied behind their back, you know, making the swing and the best guess at what is probably a good law. <laughs> so the, uh, the latest I have from Google, for what that's worth, yeah. is that training a machine learning with copyrighted data does not infringe on the data because it does not redistribute or recommunicate the data directly to the public. Uh, but you also cannot copyright it. Um, so you can't sell the song to a you know, radio station or something. But that doesn't mean that you couldn't produce it and then the radio station couldn't play it. Which, which in a way is kind of funny because it's not different than the derivative work problem already where like if I watch Star Wars, I'm not violating copyright by watching Star Wars assuming I obtained it through reasonable means. But I can't go write the Star Wars book. Well, I can as long as I don't publish it for profit. Right, as right. As you can publish a fan write, fiction like, of it. Copyright, yeah. I write my Try to sell my fan fiction. Yeah. IP lawyers are going to come crashing down on me and saying, "Hey, this is clearly derived from Star Wars. You owe us money." Or right, right. Yeah, yeah. But you could write your Star Wars fan fiction 
and then feed it into ChatGPT and say, change it to a, a, all the names to something different. Yeah, yeah. And then it, and they would be the same story, just have all the different names in there. And, you know, you put a disclaimer, all the names were changed to protect my copyright infringement lawyers, and, and you're all good. Except if you use ChatGPT to generate it, which is by definition non copyrightable now. Oh, uh, perhaps. Yes, true. Well, um, but you don't have to tell anyone that, right? Again, people could generate music and say, oh, I came up with this, I did it. Uh, the, the test case for that is going to be like, okay, well, show me your chops. Like, can you actually play an instrument, right? Can you actually sing? And uh, if they're like, no, no, I just, I made all these songs, um, but I don't perform. <laughs> it's like, well, maybe. Yeah, but, uh, there, there's also simple composition. And, you know, you can, if you, mm. if you can write it and somebody plays it and it's appealing, then, you know, mm -hmm. you did right, you did the right thing and you don't have to perform it yourself. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And produ music producers are going to run into these uh, sticky quagmires. Uh, they're already running to it, of course, because you can have you know someone write the song and someone else perform it, and then who has the rights to the song and who has the rights to the lyrics and who has rights to the, everything. So it's yeah, it gets very complicated. Another, I think, important thing to uh, mention is um, Google and other companies, as these models are getting better and better, they're aware of all these problems. Oh yeah, yeah. And, uh, as far as I know, there are a few companies that are working on adding watermarks to videos, pictures, audio files, whatever it is that the AI generates, yeah. um, they, um, they're working on adding a watermark mark that's not visible, but mm -hmm. detectable. So mm -hmm. if someone uses uh, an ML model to generate a picture of something and, and then claim that it's a real picture, um, you know, Twitter, whatever, wherever that person ends up posting it, they should theoretically have the ability to detect that it was Generated by an AI yeah, yeah, and, and yeah, and, so, and that's that's a great idea. Except that the entire um, the entire GPT model of training is designed specifically to defeat that method of, right. of protection because a GPT is basically a thing that can detect fakes. Right. And so, anytime you have a thing where it adds a, a watermark that says, "Hey, this is a fake," you can very easily train a, a GPT to unwatermark it by saying, "Okay." Here's a fake and here's the real thing. Now learn how to take the watermark off. And it'll be like, fine, I'll do that, right? Because it doesn't know that it's doing something illegal. It'll just it'll just train. So uh, yeah, adding watermarks to, to stuff, uh, using signatures. There's another thing where you can use a signature of an AI generated thing. Um, a lot of times the, the model will have a kind of a signature style in the data itself. Like you said, it's not visible. It's not something you could perceive, but it's something that you can uh, analyze usually using an AI. And then, uh, but as soon as you find a way to detect that, you just make a tiny little AI that messes up the signature, and then right. it's undetectable again. So it's uh, it's a very thorny problem. Yes, sir. Can you more sure. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> oh God. Sinatra. Yeah. Yeah. What was the uh, what was the really good Sinatra one? Yeah, the the pretty good one was uh, was jukebox, right? Yeah, let's see if we can get some more jukebox Sinatra artists. Frank Sinatra. Oh, we've got so many to choose from. Let's see. And again, this is a model from a few years ago. I never knew what I it sounds like I'm on hold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hold music. For how I need for you. Walk 
He has to speak in his head. But the baby is not just Finally I promise I will let you go This time is me This time is me I finally know why You have to go So I'm not sure if the noise is in the generator or if it's in the the source. Yeah. Enough of that. Well, it sounds crappy, but it's amazing that it can do. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of the AI stuff is dancing bear. It's dancing bear phenomena. Who's really the dancing bear phenomena? What is it? You can uh, if you don't know that there's going to be a dancing bear like in a video. Uh, you could like, you wouldn't even notice if there's some other stuff that are, you know. Uh, That's the gorilla phenomena, but uh, yeah, that is a that is a thing too. Yeah, where where if you're dancing bear is uh, dancing bear. So back in the Middle Ages, they would have a, a you know a fair or something like that, and someone would go out and catch a bear and put a chain around his neck and put it on a pole, and they train it to dance. And uh, people would be like, wow, that's amazing! That bear can dance. But they weren't impressed because the bear was doing a good dance. They were impressed because it was a bear. And so it's the same thing. You know, this is impressive not because it's good music. But because an AI was able to do it from scratch using a very small input, so yeah. But eventually, I guess so. Yeah. Something I'm curious about is that almost all the examples you played that are are kind of soft enough that you can hear it are, are really really noisy. Mm. Uh, and sometimes at all, like one time, it almost sounded like I thought, is this trying to emulate a live performance at a jazz club? Because it sounded like background. Talking. Other times it's just static and whatnot. Hmm. I wondered if you know is that intentional or is that just the technology isn't there yet to, to produce a clean sound? Right. On that. Well, so you can always filter it if you want to, uh, but that kind of defeats the purpose of the um, of you know having the AI do the whole thing. I I suspect that it's both. I suspect that there's both noise in the training data, so it's generating based on what is heard. And there's probably also uh, just some some inconsistencies in the way that the music is generated that, that generate noise in the output. So it's probably both. But. When I was listening to that, what I was hearing was a very worn out LP. The group mm. that massive amounts of mm. So I think I just listened to it. My immediate thought was they did that on purpose because by doing that, it's going to mask the sound. Mm. And that is not Frank Sinatra. It sounds like Frank Sinatra, sort of, kind of, but, and it's kind of, it's like his style thing, but it's not quite him, and it can't quite make him. Yeah. So I think that you would mask that somewhat. Mm, mm. That was really masked. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's a whole bunch of these samples, if you want, there's, they've got 259 of these. Frank Sinatra clips, if you want to look at it, um, it's just on jukebox.openai.com. And you can filter it by artist. You can listen to all the very low quality uh, AI generated music that your heart desires. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems, it seems like it'd be interesting to find out like what they trained it off of, right? Yeah. That would play into what the uh, final product was. Because you, know, you train an AI to produce sound that comes from scratchy old LPs. It's going to do a fitness to yeah, try and create a scratchy old LP. And so Frank Sinatra to it is some voice underneath a layer of scratchy old you know, yeah, LP. Yeah. And so yeah. it's just doing whatever it's told. But if you have some really great recordings, not just a sessions that are just have been refined to clean up to the men's and then you run that through the model and say, make me a new Frank Sinatra sound. It's not going to have any scrap on it. It's just going to sound as, as good as that training data was, but different. Right? Well, not as good as it was there, because obviously the difference is going to make it not work right now. But in a couple years from now, you might get like, you know, ultra high definition Frank Sinatra reborn, and then it's going to be freaking out. Like, oh, Frank! <laughs> The four people who are still alive who knew him would be like, it's, it's Frank, Frank from the roof. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, what I can see is for a market in this, yeah. um, 
okay, like when I was back in college and I had my band, um, it's like, well, we didn't have anybody that could play bass guitar. And I played drums and sang, and I can't do either. Mm. So that left us with virtually nobody that could play an instrument or sing or anything. And the ability to come up and make stuff that actually sounds good, come up with a, a really good bass guitar riff, or something like Paul Simon would go in and write this stuff. And it's just phenomenally well thought out. I mean, everybody just fits up. Yeah. You get, like, Foreigner, okay? Everything they did was so well put together. Everything. Okay, well, if you don't have a really good bass player or something like that, um, you could go in and get this thing to generate some different bass, you know, bass guitar tracks mm -hmm. for this song that you kind of got the vocals and stuff laid down. And then when you walk in, when you set up your time for your studio, you say, I need a bass guitar player that can play this, right, you know, right. this is basically what I want to play. They can alter it a little bit, but all of a sudden yeah. you can do that. Yeah, um, yeah. I was told that I love a musician. Yeah, yeah. I love a musician. Yeah, I'm, they, they would actually be playing it, but the idea of getting it so you've already got something when you go into the studio mm -hmm. or something, or into your basement, or <laughs> yeah, yeah. whatever you do, that's that's there. Mm. Um, I was told that like Michael Jackson, and I never really looked this up, but I was told that like, he, would, he would come up with this stuff in his head, and he couldn't play an instrument with anything, nothing. And so he would sit there and he would tell somebody that plays guitar, well, I want it to sound, wow, 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 you know? Right. And then he'd sit there and try to talk this guy through until he could come up with what Michael Jackson heard in his head. Yeah, yeah. You know, to do it. And again, getting something like this that can do this um, and move that stuff along to where you can actually give it to somebody that can actually play it mm. artistically. I mean, it's kind of like drum machines are great if you don't have a drummer. Right, right. Um, but if you can actually get a drummer, not everything is perfectly in sync and it sounds much better. Mm. It just mm. sounds real. It sounds artistic compared to just a... a bad drum machine out of the early 80s. Right, right. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of music produced today that they just use drum machine on the drum track, and it's like, eh, it's again, too mechanical, right? Yeah. I mean, they have some really good drum machines now. They do, yeah. But not everyone uses them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, again, it's one of those things. It's like, just, if mm. you can get the concept and get it to a real drummer, there's a lot of really good studio musicians around right right you know they can do this stuff if you can give them the concept of what you're trying to get and say here flow with this yeah and like you were saying back in the 80s the drum machines were kind of garbage they were they were better than no drummer but they were kind of not great yeah. nowadays you've got a drum machine that's more or less as good as a real drummer if, you know, if you're willing to put up with a little lower quality sound you know on the output um and uh, i'm I'm fairly confident that the AI is a similar kind of situation where we're in the eighties of the, you know, the drum machine phase where it's like, well, you know, I can hear what it's trying to do. It's not doing very well, but, uh, maybe a couple of years down the road it's going to be, um, not perfect, but quite good. Yeah. yeah. So what happened to the Beatles now or then? That the was just Beatles. last week. I haven't had a chance to hear that on a good system yet. It didn't sound very good when I listened to it on the phone. No? Do you want me to play it? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. 